Hello and welcome to our presentation. First of all, I would like to thank you for taking time to listen to this presentation. And please also do leave us comments, um, feedback in the comments. We are looking forward to hearing from you and we'll be grateful for your feedback. My name is Gauda Kumbite, and I am presenting also on behalf of my co-authors, uh, Claude Raude and Alex Taylor. We are a group of interdisciplinary researchers from the University of Kassel in Germany and City University of London in the UK. In this video, I will briefly introduce to you our paper, Critical Tools for Machine Learning, Working with Intersectional Critical Concepts in Machine Learning Systems Design. So, the main questions that we investigate in this paper and that motivate our research are how can we work with knowledge from social sciences and humanities in machine learning systems design? And also, how can this knowledge help orient us towards more contextualized, inclusive, and accountable machine learning systems? The three of us um, come from rather mixed disciplinary backgrounds um, that include human computer interaction, systems design, science and technology studies and intersectional feminist theory. And we wanted to see how these different perspectives can be brought together fruitfully in machine learning systems design. This is important to us because critical theories, particularly intersectional feminist, postcolonial and anti-racist theories have developed conceptual tools and methodological tools to understand, research and intervene into societal biases which is an issue that is quite pertinent uh, for contemporary machine learning and AI applications. They offer a socio-technical understanding of bias and inequalities and propose that technologies are not simply neutral tools, but are part of larger socio-technical entanglements. So this systemic socio-technical approach was um, the basis uh, that we started from. To investigate these main questions that I just mentioned, um, we conducted four speculative design workshops. During the workshops, participants experimented with four critical concepts. Those concepts were situated knowledges or situating, figurations or figuring, diffraction, and critical fabulation or speculation. They were developed to analyze and tackle questions of structural inequalities, knowledge production and power. During the workshops, these concepts were actualized through a series of explanatory and design exercises and guided the design process of um, two speculative machine learning systems. But let me first tell you a little bit about the concepts themselves. Situating as a methodology emerged in feminist epistemology and black feminist scholarship. It describes the idea that all knowledge is generated from specific perspectives, that is to say specific contexts, bodies, disciplinary backgrounds, and so on. Therefore, all knowledge is situated knowledge. And when we engage in science and technology, we generate partial perspectives. And those perspectives are dependent um, on disciplinary positions, as well as on distributions of power and resources in society. Situating, therefore, means accounting for the position that one speaks from, or, um, well, in this case, designs from. Figurations or figuring is another feminist tool that we used. Figurations are conceptual mappings or conceptual figures that embody particular historical, political, and material conditions. They can also embody meanings and practices and even controversies. They can be used as guiding tools for exploring the different layers of cultural and political imagination and possible courses of action. For instance, um, a cyborg is one such figuration that has been used in feminist theory and politics. And among other things, it highlights that there are no pure or innocent positions, just like the cyborg itself is neither purely human uh, nor machine. Diffraction, another concept um, that we used, is borrowed from physics and when uh, worked with in feminist theoretical context, it highlights that the kinds of knowledge that we create 
depend on the tools and theories that we use to create it. So just like the different settings of an experimental apparatus influence if we will be able to capture light as a particle or as a wave, so do our design perspectives and the technologies they generate affect the very contexts that they will be used in and the phenomena um, that they engage. And last but not least, uh, critical fabulation or speculation is a method to work with imagination and speculative thinking to address different imaginaries and power hierarchies. It is rooted in black critical thought and historical research, also worked with in speculative design. Um, and it offers a way to focus specifically on missing imaginaries and perspectives through informed speculative thinking and storytelling. So our aim uh, was to see if we can find ways to allow these four concepts to lead the design process. To do that, we activated them through exploratory and design exercises that the participants engaged in during the workshops. And we say activated or actualized instead of translated because there is no one way to directly translate um, complex critical concepts into formats such as exercises. Instead, what we try to do is to offer one possible way how to work with them while also leaving space for the participants to form their own interpretations. Um, each workshop, a little bit about the overall structure, each workshop focused on one concept at a time. Um, the workshop usually started with an introduction with facilitators explaining the concept of the day and also with doing some collective reading of uh, selected theoretical and literary texts that illustrated or described the concept. Then participants did exploratory exercises that allowed them to delve a bit deeper into the concept in a more active way. And afterwards, participants did design exercises that helped them work with the concept in a design setting. And by that we mean to apply the concept as a method in their speculative machine learning systems design scenario. So each workshop also ended with a sharing and feedback session. And uh, while the work on exploration and design was performed in smaller groups of participants that remained uh, stable during the series, the introduction and the sharing at the end were done more collectively. Um, for detailed descriptions of the workshops and all the exercises, we invite you to, as the slide says here, um, here, <laughs> look at the look at the our paper. Um, and uh, there we also uh, talk a bit more about the um, examples of uh, speculative machine learning systems that the participants created. As you can see, um, a snapshot here on the on the slide. Um, so the, at the end, the two systems that uh, participants presented were an assistive technology aimed at empowering people in communicating about their health by providing multimedia portfolios that aid in such health communication and a digital educational tool that combined a crowdsource um, so-called entangled dictionary and a suggester as the participants called it to help users learn and understand the complex histories and implications of language and of specific um, types of language that, that we use. Um, so we talk about this a bit more in, in the paper, but um, coming back to the initial question that motivated our work, namely how to work with critical concepts and systems design, um, which is also really what we try to uh, address in the paper, uh, we would like to highlight several insights that are based both on our own experiences in formulating the series, on our observations of the whole process, and also on participants' feedback. So first, we note that there are several key tensions that emerged um, during the whole process. Um, first, a tension between actualization and understandability of concepts. So how to actualize them in ways that do justice to their foundation without overburdening participants with too much information. The second tension was between formalization and open-endedness. 
um, how to balance the need for formalized procedures that computing often requires and interpretative flexibility that is needed for critical reflection. And I'm sure a lot of you who work with knowledges from social sciences and humanities will be able to relate um, to this and, and other tensions that I'm mentioning here. Last but not least, uh, a significant tension emerged between direct applicability of concepts as methods and a more incremental orientation of design process. So in other words, how to navigate the push towards applicability and pragmatics of computing versus the kind of structural, slower pace, perspectival change that critical concepts can offer and can um, generate. In the end, uh, we suggest that the concepts we worked with allowed to orient machine learning systems design towards inclusion, contextualization, and accountability. Um, working with situated knowledges helped ground the design process and its outcomes. Figurations allowed to understand machine learning systems as connected to disciplinary, cultural, and social imaginaries and work with those imaginaries. Diffraction exemplified the multi-layered effects um, that machine learning systems have in their use environments. And critical fabulations and speculations really drew attention to missing perspectives in systems design and challenged dominant narratives. Um, furthermore, these concepts and the very fact that they are rooted in explicitly intersectional feminist anti-racist and post-colonial fields of research and activism and the, 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 this context that they brought with them shifted the questions of accountability in machine learning systems design towards uh, what can be termed, termed responsibility, a capacity to respond and be, a, be called to respond for the systems and their effects. Also, the notion of fairness was reoriented here more towards justice and the questioning of power differences and hierarchies. And we encourage you again to read the, uh, the paper for more detailed argumentation on this. Um, so to end, we would like to highlight that the process of working with critical concepts required man maintaining an open experimental setting and holding the tensions that, that I mentioned earlier. There is no foolproof way to implement fairness and accountability through design, but it is nonetheless important, we think, to understand them as inextricably dependent on the process of making oneself and systems accountable. And this can be done through deliberate research and decision making in the design process and a willingness to invest in fairness and, and accountability first and foremost to the willingness to become responsible to contexts, materials, and communities that systems operate within and affect. So um, these are the main conclusions, and we invite researchers and designers to use the exercises and examples that we provide in the paper and also on the website, um, critml.org, um, and to find their own ways of working with critical knowledge. Um, so thank you again for your attention and um, please visit our website and we very much look forward to discussing with you our paper and hearing your feedback.